Hi everyone, Kyle here. This last week I was flying and my RPM gauge went out and uh, during the, the virtual Oshkosh event I went ahead and purchased the GI 275 uh, engine monitor system to put here just because I've been having issues with my sending units uh, for my fuel and some um, issues with my voltage and amps here. So I'll zoom in here so you can see it. And this has led me, because of my, my amp issue, volt issue, uh, I also have a hard time reading my oil temp on this older unit uh, for my Piper Arrow. And then the other issue I have is here, the screen's all scratched up, but uh, reading my left fuel tank and my right, my left tank every once in a while doesn't read correctly, but uh, I manage that with my fuel flow. But I'll show the video here one second of my... RPM gauge going out here this last week, and that's part of tomato flames. I do need it, so we are finally gonna go ahead and get the G uh, the GI275 engine monitoring system in here, and uh, we'll do that right now. All right, the GI275 is in, and I'm very happy with it. And as you can see here, I'll try to zoom in a little bit better, but I got my manifold pressure set up. I got my RPM set up. And the reason I flipped them is because on uh, my controls here, this runs my manifold pressure and the middle runs my prop, which is my RPM. And that's just how I wanted to set them up. And that's how they originally were set up down here. So I did that. Uh, fuel uh, is not correct at the moment, but it says I have zero on my left tank. 10 on the right and I opted to put that up here because I can have it in uh, the third bar here but what they do is they set up uh, a dedicated page here so you have a couple dedicated pages and if you want your uh, fuel flow your fuel flow on here which I wanted uh, you have to forego the bar with your fuel tank but it also displays here so that's what I did uh, so I have oil pressure uh, oil temp, cylinder head temp right here, fuel flow, and then fuel pressure as well. And then on the next page here, you can see EGT. And then the third page is my CHT temp. And then my, excuse me, my e, EGT temp. And there's my CHT temp. And then the next page is my CHT temp with the EGT. And then uh, this E, the GI275 gets its information from my GNX375, and it's the fuel totalizer, which will give me my endurance, my range, and everything if I plug in a destination. So I'm very happy with that. There's just a, a couple issues that I have uh, with it, which I'll get into. But the main reason I wanted this display is for the iPad feature. So I, I have my iPad here. I use Garmin Pilot. And one thing I like about it, I'll show you here, is you can go to Home. And then from Home, you can select on EIS, and it'll give you your in-flight information while you're flying here. So it'll give your RPM, manifold pressure, oil temp, fuel flow, um, everything here. Uh, CHT, EGT, it, it, it's great. But I'm going to go back to home, I'm going to go to logbook, and I'll show you my last flight here from Mille Lacs Lake back to Wilmer. So this is my logbook, you can see engine data, I click engine data, it pulls up all the flight history, and I can select do I want to view this data at one time, two times, five times, and it will actually play everything out for that flight. And then on the bottom here, I can select up and see the graph. I can select on the left here, CHT, EGT. I can select those perimeters. On the right, I can select perimeters. On the bottom here, CHT, EGT, fuel flow. And uh, I can actually expand the middle bar here and run that throughout the course of the flight and just go back and track the data. And that's one thing I kind of geek out on. I, I like to look back and see, you know, was I running Lena Peak, Richard Peak? How was every cylinder doing? And since I got this engine analyzer, uh, I've been actually running a true 24 square, which is just precision. And I, I noticed my flying is a lot better. I'm more efficient and I'm actually getting the maximum out of my engine. Um, 
you know, back in the day when I had the steam gauges, I didn't realize it, but I was always flying at like 22 manifold pressure and like 2300 RPM. And I always just thought I was flying slower. And I thought I was flying 24 square, but it just wasn't precise enough. And with a digital uh, engine analyzer, I mean, it, it is precise. The numbers are right there and you can just actually track this and look at this so much better. So this is one of the, the biggest things that I feel Garmin has going for itself is that you can track and look at all that. But one of the issues I had is when I installed the GI275 here, uh, I did not have this EIS on my iPad and I thought I did something wrong. So I called Garmin and I got so many answers that, you know, the GI275 doesn't give you engine information. I had one guy say that you need to flight stream 510. I also had another guy say, I need a software update. And that's one thing I did wrong, or didn't do wrong, is I went to an AMP to help me install it, and he did a great job, a phenomenal job. But you need to have uh, Garmin actually do the software update. So I flew down to T, South Dakota, had the Garmin shop do the software update on the GI275. From there, it actually gave me the functionality to run it on my iPad, which is great, but it was another 185 bucks. So one of the problems with this unit is I bought it at Oshkosh, I got the $1,000 discount, but when you think you're gonna install it, you're only halfway there. The problem is it doesn't come with all the probes. Uh, you have to get the fuel flow, uh, manifold pressure probe, oil temp, is it oil temper or oil? Yeah, oil temperature probe. Those are three probes you have to buy on the side. Build the wire harness, get your fuse breakers, and it's it's just more time intensive. Whereas I know with the uh, with the CGR 30P, the JPI, when you buy those items, as far as I know, everything comes with them. The other issue I have is I have a GAD 13 which gives me outside air temperature on my G5s and on my GI375, but that outside air temperature probe does not talk to the GI275. Therefore, the analyzer cannot do the uh, math to calculate my horsepower. So if you go to your flight manual or your, uh, your pilot's operating handbook, usually you'll have the table that says at density altitude with your power settings, this is your, your horsepower, right? Well, this thing cannot calculate it. Garmin doesn't have it set up that way. Even though I do have the outside air temperature probe, the GAD-13, I'm a little disappointed that it can't do that. So that's one disadvantage that I see that maybe, wink, wink, Garmin, you could fix. <laughs> uh, that'd be nice because to me that'd be simple. It's it's simple math. Instead of having me calculate it, I'm, I'm positive the, the analyzer can do it if they can just get them to talk properly. So... Um, yeah, so other than all the extra probes and everything you need, I'm very happy with the unit, but the number one reason I bought it was because of the iPad feature. Just because I, I know myself, I'm not a fan of plugging in a USB stick and going through the data, whereas on this thing, every flight I take, as long as I have the iPad running, I can go back and look at the full history of the flight and all the data, each cylinder, you know, which cylinder head was hot, uh, uh, exhaust gas temp which one was the hottest and there's just so much data and I, I love going through that so I hope this uh, helps everybody uh, in your decision and uh, I guess the last thing I have to show you is my fuel my fuel gauge here it was never my old setting it was the actual um, probes in the tank so uh, after I got done installing it now I find out that uh, it's just a little bit more money but we got to put uh, basically new uh, new magnetic floats in the tanks so I can get them to talk to this a little more accurate. But And the other, other thing that I meant, forgot to mention is all of these, I'll show you here, all of these settings on here, uh, the user, you know, basically myself, the EMP, has to set up all those thresholds per the flight manual, whereas the JPI and the the J not yeah JPI and the CGR they set those up at the factory uh I'm responsible to set those up and make sure they're accurate so just uh basically maybe another another disadvantage but not the end of the world um 
So like I said, hopefully that helps you out. Hope you guys all have a, a great day and great flying. See you later.